How's it going, 10 Little Hot Dog Cuties? Ben here, and today we're going to be talking about something a little, a little bit more serious because I want to share a part of how I came to be the person I am today with you guys. And one of the things had to do with dealing with the loss of a very close friend of mine who passed away from cancer in high school. And the reason why I wanted to make this video is that a lot of people, especially families, when a family member dies, they think that um, eventually over time, they their family member who passed away will be forgotten. And depending on how much of an impact that this person had on other people, they will never be forgotten. And I, I remember um, earlier this week, I was thinking about him and i was like i'm going to i'm going to tell his sister i'm going to tell his little sister that i still think about him and i did i i messaged her on instagram cuz i don't i don't have her te uh, cell phone number because we were never that super close but we did know each other because he and i were very close friends so i texted her and i was like i want you to know that i still think about nick because he was such a positive force in my life and that he constantly constantly wanted people to be better than how they were that we could always improve ourselves and I messaged it to her I didn't expect much really but she she messaged me back like a day later and was like wow this really meant a lot to me because I thought that people are starting to forget him but this means that you know the impact that he left in his short time in this world still reverberates with the people that he's touched so I kinda wanna share this story with you guys so you guys can see that you know if if you have lost someone in your life and you're you just did a YouTube search to see other people's experiences of losing someone especially in high school because that was a it was a really pivotal moment in my life because I was so young it was the first loss that I actually had to experience and I want to share my experience with you guys to let you know that if, if this if this kind of situation just happened to you that they will not be forgotten you'll always remember them you'll never forget them the impacts that they have made in your life are infinite the day you you personally pass away will be the day that you will forget them and maybe not, maybe you won't forget them. We don't know what's there in the afterlife. So this video is dedicated to my late friend, Nick Kim. Nick, rest in peace, brother. I hope you're having a great time wherever you are right now. And I just want his memory, I want his memory to be known, to be known to the rest of the world and to you guys because I feel like I share, I share a lot of my personal life with you guys and I want to share it not because, you know, this is also kind of like a catharsis for me, but also because human lives are relatable. And if you guys are ever feeling down or anything like that, you can refer to my videos and know that there's other people out there that are going through the same same thing. So Nick passed away, I, I believe when he was 16 or 17, I don't remember, but I was I was 16 at the time and we were in the same grade. So there might be a couple of months off, and he was one of the nicest guys I have met in my life. Like even to this day, even to this day, it's been, oh my god, it's been almost five to six years since, since we lost him, and I can say the top 10 list of people that I've met who have been truly empathetic, he's still in that top 10 list. He was one of the most caring individuals out there. He cared about things that he wasn't even a part of. So I remember I started an alliance group in my high school and Nick, straight male, uh, doesn't isn't really involved in the LGBT community at all and whatnot. But he was one of the biggest supporters of me trying to op open this club because he was like, there isn't a club like this at our school 
and I really think my classmates who do identify that way can benefit from it. And Nick was religious, he was Christian, and to see that kind of generosity from someone like that onto a topic or onto a topic or to a group of people that he doesn't identify with, that showed that showed to me that he truly, truly cared. I also remember one time I was in class and there was another girl who was homophobic and we were talking about Nathaniel Hawthorne. If you're in high school, you've probably read one of his books. It's called The Scarlet Letter. And they were talking about how Herman Melville, the man who wrote Moby Dick, kind of had a crush on Nathaniel Hawthorne, kind of like a homoerotic kind of crush on him. And I remember this girl in my class being like, oh my god, that's so gross, I can't, I can't imagine it, why, why, why would that happen, it's so gross. And like, she, she was yelling this out to our entire class, and our teacher wasn't saying anything. I think everybody was very uncomfortable with the fact of what she was saying, they were kind of shocked that sh this was literally coming out of her mouth. But, and I was quiet too, because during that point in my life, I... I kind of was reserved. I didn't want to be loud and about about my identity because of the fact that I personally was struggling with my own identity. And I remember Nick getting up and telling her, will you please just be quiet and keep this to yourself? Like nobody needs to hear that. Nobody needs to hear your personal thoughts. You don't have to say it. The reason why our teacher decided to say this because it is in the context of our class. That's why we have to discuss it. You don't have to put your nasty opinion out there into the world. And that's the thing. We all have personal biases. We all, we all have prejudice against one group or another. Prejudice against one ideology over another. We all have it. That's something we all have to kind of accept. I hate it when people are like, oh, I'm so open-minded. I accept all kinds of people. No, you don't. There's gonna, there's gonna be a group of people. There's gonna be one person who rubs you the wrong way, and you're gonna be biased against them. But you know what everyone else does when they have that bias? They keep it to themselves. They don't they don't blurt it out into the world so everybody can hear, and it was just a really nasty thing for her to do. And Nick got up and told her that you don't need to, and he was very respectful. He didn't yell at her. He was just like, can you just stop? Like, this is, this is so messed up for you to say because we could have classmates that identify like that. And in other areas, Nick was also passionate about other things that didn't affect him. Again, he was a huge supporter of the Paralympics. He volunteered for the Paralympics. He did a lot of things to help disabled athletes and he cared about those things. He raised money for Relay of Life before he was even diagnosed with cancer. He raised a lot of money for Relay for Life. He was the life of the party, the super charmer. He always made people feel welcome even if he didn't know them at all. He was like, he was so, such an amazing guy. Like he never wanted anybody to ever feel uncomfortable. And I'm sure you guys have people in your lives like that and it they, they they just radiate they just make they just make things look so much brighter than they are which i think is an amazing thing so during my junior year nick's cancer started metastasizing and you know he stopped coming to school as often and at that time i didn't know i didn't know at all he he didn't tell a lot of people. I knew that there was a there was a tumor in his back a couple of months before and that the doctors who went to the hospital and got it removed. And I thought that was it. I thought I thought everything was better, but he started coming to school less and less and what made it worse is that I did not have a lot of classes with him, so I didn't know that he, the frequency of how often he was coming to class wasn't that much to begin with during the later stages of his cancer. So when when they when they announced that he had passed, it was such a huge shock to me because I thought I thought he was fine. I thought like he was getting better, he was getting treated. So it it hit me really hard and I just didn't know how to process it. I remember just breaking down in my cuz I was at home when I when I became aware of it. I just broke down and 
I don't, my, my, my mom just didn't know what to do. She was just like, I've never experienced the loss of a friend. So she just didn't know how to process it. She just told me to like, you know, get my emotions out and to just process it. And I did that. It took me a while. Uh, I was sad for quite a long time. He, he meant a lot to me. He, he defended me when there was no one else there defending me. And I think that's why he has had such a huge impact in my life. And I remember during, during senior year of my high school, because he passed away in the summer, during senior year of my high school, I remember, I remember going to honors night, which honors like the smartest and the most giving, the most community oriented students with awards. I remember attending it and his sister comes up to the podium and his sister says, says something and it made me realize that even even after death he continues to make a positive impact on others his sister gave a speech on how the Make-A-Wish Foundation um, asked him what he wanted and he he told the Make-A-Wish Foundation that he didn't want anything what he wanted was he wanted to give a scholarship he wanted to give a scholarship to someone that needed it that needed to go to college, that that desired to go to college and needed a scholarship to go to college. And that's what he did with his Make-A-Wish. He made a scholarship for our school to help someone else. That just speaks volumes of how much of a per great person he is. And I continue every day, every day that I live, guys, I try to evoke the same the same level of sincerity, empathy, love, and respect and care he gives to others. The way I keep his memory alive more than anything else in the world is that every day I strive to be a better person. Every day I strive to be a more caring person, to be a more passionate person, to care about things that I don't usually care about because it doesn't concern me. And that's the kind of message I want to share with you guys today. I know this was a more somber topic, I'm usually more silly, but I feel like this needed to be said, especially for people who have experienced the loss of a friend. If you are watching this, always, always strive to continue the message of whoever it is that you lost. I think that's the greatest way that we can keep their memory alive. And every single day that I live and breathe, I think about Nick every now and then. But the one way that I keep his memory alive is to continue to be a better person, to continue to be empathetic, to continue to care. I love you guys. I hope you like this video. Be sure to turn back next week for another one. I know, I think I'm uploading this a day later than I usually do. I like to upload on Friday, Friday nights so you guys can see it on Saturdays, but I was kind of busy if you guys saw my Instagram I had a lot going on we just finished our second block in medical school and I'm starting my third block so that's very exciting but this video excuse me this video is dedicated to my late friend Nick Kim I love you Nick stay gold guys stay gold and Nick you stay gold wherever you are this is Ben